G'day everyone and welcome to Brushes with Beck. Today's video is the long-awaited conclusion to my drawing of a black-bellied whistling duck. So in this video I finally finish all of the bird. So please stick around while we work through that together. Now if you haven't watched part one and part two of this drawing I will link both of those uh, hopefully in the cards but definitely down in the comment box down below so check that out if you haven't seen the first two parts of this drawing and you would like to know how I accomplished what I did with this one. So for this piece I once again I am using the Derwent drawing pencils and Faber-Castell Polychromos color pencils on pastel matte board. This is a light blue piece of pastel matte and I am currently working over the back of the bird. Now I did sort of put this off a little bit. I find lots of segmented feathers like this to be a little bit tiresome to do because I can't sort of sweep through an area and do like block in big areas of color. I have to really focus on every single little feather and it's hard to get into a rhythm I find. And I think that's what it mainly is that I struggle with. So for these, there's a lot of subtle color changes in this area because of the way the light is hitting the back of the bird and each of these feathers is angled slightly differently. There's a lot of different color changes, a lot of different, you know, sort of shadows and highlights in here. So I've used quite a bit of the Mars Violet from the Derwent drawing set and the, I think it's Light Ochre, not Light Ochre, might be Light Ochre, as well as really dark browns and red browns and yellow browns depending on uh, the area of feather and how the light has hit that feather really impacts on whether it's a reddish brown or a yellow brown or has some of that purple sheen in it from reflecting the light. So it was a very interesting area to do and each feather was quite different and it meant I really had to focus on each individual feather uh, to be able to accurately capture my reference photo. So this was, like I said, it was quite challenging because you can't sort of get into a real rhythm with it because you have really have to focus on each individual feather as a different section, but you know, it was lovely seeing it come together feather by feather. So it can be a little bit daunting and which is why it's important just to focus on one feather at a time, lay that in, get it right and then move on to your next one. So as with most of my process for this piece, it's a matter of mapping in my dark and light areas. Usually I map in maybe the, the pale edge to the feather. I might then lay in a main base color and then work in some darks and some lights. Alternatively, I may start, as you see with this feather, I've gone in with the, the dark brown and then the Mars Violet, worked from my dark areas to my light areas. And it doesn't really matter so much as long as I am laying in those layers fairly lightly and I can blend them into one another, either using a bit more pressure or just lightly sweeping over them with one of the polychromos, say a warm gray that tends to smooth things out quite nicely without too much pressure. So it really was a matter of focusing on my reference, capturing each individual feather um, as they are very unique from each other and just working through it that way. I found afterwards that working through a lot of the feathers, sometimes I would look back at some of my previous feathers that I had colored in and you know, I'd have to change the color tone a little bit and maybe that was just you know, a little bit of a glaze of a slight red brown over the top, just to alter it slightly, nothing too drastic, just um, things can look a little bit different when you've got other colors around them versus when you're just drawing that feather against the blank page. So that's important to remember too, that sometimes you might need to go back and refine some of those colors just to alter them so they all work together more cohesively. So for this piece, for me, it was really important for me to capture the vibrance of the colors of this bird and how rich those colors were, which is why I went, you know, quite strong with those color variances in the back feathers themselves. You can see those Mars violets, you can see the golden browns versus the red browns because my photograph of this bird, the bird really just pops in. If you see this bird in person, 
They are an absolutely stunning bird. Their feathers are extremely vibrantly coloured. And the contrast between the black belly and those red and chestnut and brown feathers is just beautiful. So I really wanted to make sure that I really emphasised my colours, made them nice and strong. I didn't want weak, washed out colours. I didn't want, you know, only minor variances in colour. I wanted to really make sure that I made it a strong impact with this piece. It, want, it needed to be, you know, vibrant and rich in colour. And I think I've managed to achieve that really nicely um, by laying down, you know, multiple layers of colour, overlapping colour, not just sticking with one colour for a layer. It's just, you know, laying it in, overlapping and overlapping before blending them out. So it really is, you know, the same process throughout the whole piece that I keep repeating myself with, and I do apologise, to put down a number of light layers and then blend out. Don't go in too strong, too fast, unless you're doing like a really solid a really solid dark area, like those smaller areas, I tend to go in pretty hard quite early. But for your coloured areas, you know, do those softer layers, you can easily blend them out, lay a colour over the top, make corrections, you know, it makes it much, much easier. Don't worry about the grain of the paper early on because that will go away, you can blend that out easily as you continue to layer up. And as you work on a piece, and depending on the color of, if you're using pastel mat, depending on the color of the pastel mat you are using, you are going to find that perhaps some particular color pencils will work to blend out that texture better than other pencils will. In the Faber-Castell Polychromos, particular pencils seem to blend out and smooth more easily than other colors. And again, with the Derwent drawing pencils, you're going to find, I mean, the wax pencils blend together quite well Anyway, you can smooth them out and blend them together to create a nice finish, but sometimes depending on the colour you are using versus the colour of your paper, you are going to find some colours will end up looking more grainy, so you need to overlap them with something that perhaps complements the paper better to get a more smooth finish. And hopefully that made sense, because it made sense in my head, but I don't know if it's going to make sense to you guys when you listen to me explain it. Um, so yeah, just making sure that you are working with, not only with your pencils, but with the color of the paper to get the result that you desire. You don't need to force getting a smooth result on this paper. It takes a little bit of time sometimes. Um, you can also, I haven't done it in this piece at all, but you can also blend out using a cotton bud or a blending stump to smooth out your colors between each layer. And that works quite well especially with the Faber-Castell Polychromos pencils, and I'm assuming other oil-based pencils. The wax-based pencils can be a bit gluggy with a cotton bud, but they do blend out as well. So I just want to take a moment that while you're watching this video, that if you are enjoying it, to please give it a big thumbs up, comment down below, and subscribe to my channel while you're at it so that you can see a new upload from me every single week. So the real importance when using any sort of color pencil or any sort of surface is that you are comfortable using it. And the only way you can really get comfortable using things is with a lot of practice. So don't be afraid to experiment. Don't be afraid to mess up. Um, if I messed this picture up, if I thought I messed it up in any way, I would have just tried to push on through, see if I could correct the mistake and work it out and keep going. I think the only time I really gave up on a piece of art was I actually made a video about it. It was a flamingo drawing that I had started on a flamingo drawing that I had started on a smooth paper and it ended up being too tiring for my hand. The size of the piece was too big for the smooth texture of the paper and it was very tiresome for my hand and I didn't like how the background had started out once I came back to it. I thought it looked terrible, so I gave up on that completely. But in terms of if you think you've made a mistake on your piece of work, you're having trouble blending something out, you think you've used the wrong color, see if you can correct it. It's amazing what you can do to correct color by working different colors over the top. 
or to remove color using a kneaded eraser or um, another type of eraser. It's amazing how many things you can correct and if you finish up a piece, often you don't even notice a mistake like that. So keep that in mind as you're working on something. Don't be too worried about making an error because it happens. Um, it happens a lot. Sometimes I go to lay down a tiny bit of color and I realize that you know, my hand, my hand trembles or something and it goes in the completely wrong spot. And I'm, so then I have to make a correction based on that. We're only human, we make mistakes and we've just got to learn to work around them. And I think that's really, really important as well. So in this area here, you've got some, I think they're primary wing feathers that stick out there. And I've sharpened my pencils for this area because the detail is very, very fine. For a lot of the rest of the piece, you would have noticed that my pencils weren't very sharp. And this is because you don't need really sharp pencils on pastel mat to lay down a uh, nice, rich color. The pastel mat will just take that color from a blunt pencil and it will just be on the page. It's fantastic. That's why I find it very easy to work on. Unlike smooth paper, where you've always got to maintain that sharp pencil to lay down color easily. So I've sharpened my pencils for this area to make sure I get those details nice and accurate as possible. And I'm working in my colors. I started with the, the light Sienna, I think it is from Derwent Drawing for those pale rims. And in the end, I went over those rims with the, I think it's warm gray four or five, just to tone them down a little bit and to blend them into those brown feathers a little bit more. Beyond that, it was really onto the tail, which is the last of the feathers in this bird. And this is a bit challenging because the tail in my reference photo isn't very clear. It's not very obvious where the feathers overlap and where the detail is. So I had to alter my photo a little bit, brightness contrast, just to figure out what was going on where. Initially, I sort of sketched in the details in one, in one way, and then I realized it wasn't quite how I thought it was. So I altered that, as you can see there, adding in some little feathers jutting out from the side of that main central feather. So a bit of a challenge working on something that you can't see the detail properly of, and that's just, that can happen. You know, not every area of your photo is necessarily going to have all of the detail that you need. And that's when you can, you don't have to capture every bit of detail. You can be a bit more vague with the detail. And as long as your piece stands up as a whole, it really won't matter. So this area came out nice and rich, but a little bit too reddish brown uh, for my taste compared to the rest of the bird. I did try and tone it down a little bit with a warm gray, just so it wasn't so glaringly red brown but it came up very very nicely and you can just see that I'm just cleaning up around the edge there with a kneaded eraser. So that's the last of the feathering on the bird and the last thing I have left to do is the feet. Now you may notice that the feet are actually cut off and that's because they're cut off in my reference photo and when I started this I hadn't actually decided what to do on that. Oh, and I forgot that before I moved on to the feet, I added some chocolate brown along the side of the bird in those black areas just to make them a little bit richer because there's a subtle hint of color in those in my reference photo. But back to the feet. In my reference photo, they're cut off because the bird's standing on a slope. And I hadn't decided exactly what I was going to do with that yet. The bird is finished. I've finished the piece, but at some point I might go back to it and work in something there to ground the bird. I might add some feet in or some grass or some water. I haven't decided yet, but that's why the feet are cut off and why we're not going to be drawing those today. So we've got these light, delicate, fluffy feathers around where the leg joins the body. And I've just been very loose with my grays there and some blue and brown tones there just to keep it loose and fluffy looking before moving on to the leg. Now the legs are bright pink. This one's very brightly lit up from the light. So I've gone in with my pinks first and then I'm brightening it up with my other colors before moving on to adding shadows. Once again, using a variety of colors for shadows. I'm using Mars Violet. I think it's, it's either sky blue or light ultramarine and some warm grays. 
and also I think it's red violet as well that I'm using there from the polychromos range and that just adds some nice depth to those shadows rather than just adding a dark version of the pink color using a variety of colors really helps add some nice depth there and make it more realistic so just a few little touches here and there altering details as I as I see them where they need to be altered correcting little bits and pieces before moving on to the second leg this one is in complete shadow so there's no bright pink areas but I've got to work in the same shadow colors that I did for the other leg this one's actually much darker as well so I've added I think it's dark indigo in there as well with the other colors and much a nice dark blue to really deepen that shadow and to make it really stand out but at the same time I'm still maintaining some of that pink color in there so that you can still tell that it is a leg of the bird you've still got those color tones in there they're just muted and darker so few little touch-ups here and there on the body of the bird and before you forget because I nearly did we have to finish off the eye as well because I didn't do the eye when I did the head so that's what we're doing now the first thing I did was I added the white around the eye that's there's this beautiful ring of white feathers around the eye I just laid that in with a little bit of polychromos before I started on the eye now it was very very important to be really really careful with this it's so easy to accidentally go wrong with something so small I used the Dermot Drawing Chinese White to put in the highlight of the eye before working in all my other colors around it rather than working in my colors around a bare spot of paper and then adding the white it was easier to add the white first and work around that color so the eye came out quite nicely I got the the highlights and shadows in it like I wanted I got the uh, the iris in the the pupil in the correct location rather and the highlight as well and then I worked in those beautiful white feathers around the eye and adjusted some shadows and color tones around the eye to really finish it off so if you've been following along with me for the past well, well three videos in total now to complete this black bellied whistling duck I do hope you've enjoyed it I wanted to slow things down a bit and go over more my process of things rather than being rushed like I quite often am with my much shorter uh, speed videos so I hope it has been useful to you and that you've enjoyed these series of videos it's also been very very helpful for me to be able to slow down a bit with working on a piece really focus on the details and the colors and make smarter decisions rather than more rushed decisions trying to get a piece finished for a video in a week which is very very challenging so I hope you've liked this format of video and hopefully I can do some more in the future as well just cleaning up on this piece but thank you once again thank you very much for watching I do hope you've enjoyed this video don't forget to comment like and subscribe and I'll see you again next week for another video stay creative